hello friends welcome or welcome back to my channel i'm so excited about today's video because this is the first real video um that i'm talking about my 2025 plans for my system uh, i want to focus this video specifically on my 2025 journal and it's really all going to be based on some of the lessons learned in 2024 and how i experienced using my journal this year and then how those experiences have impacted my decisions for 2025 journaling. So I have a couple things here on the table, what I'm using in 2025 and then what I was using in 2024. Let's start by talking about the Hobonichi Hone I used in 2024 as my daily journal and then I'll jump into these. <coughs> Pardon me. So I... I admit that 2024 was the first year that I really got into daily journaling. I've always kind of journaled in the past um, and I've always wanted to be more consistent with my journaling and 2024 was really the first year I felt like successfully able to do so and what's really good is that I feel like it's stuck with me and it's finally clicked for me and I anticipate daily journaling to be a regular part of my daily routine moving forward. The Hobonichi was really important in helping me figure out how I could make this a daily practice for myself. A beautiful book, some beautiful paper, just kind of like the whole experience really did matter to me and really made a difference for me. But with all that said, I am not returning to the Hone in 2024 or to the Hobonichi in 2025 for journaling. And I'll kind of share why. So early on when I was, and let's zoom in a little bit. Early on when I was exploring the Hobonichi, I kind of jumped on the bandwagon and tried doing what all the other influencers and content creators were doing. I was putting in stickers. I was adding ephemera from, you know, different things I was doing or different things that happened. Um, see, let me see if I can find something specific. You know, I got an order from Atlas Stationery and I kept the 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 postcard and I started just doing what I thought what I liked on Instagram and seeing if I could make some of these things work for me and it's kind of a little bit all over the place there's no consistency as I'm kind of flipping through these early pages um, and I'm trying different things and I'm kind of exploring and I'm starting to realize a couple months into the year that this is quite exhausting the ephemera, the trying to make every spread really cute, really beautiful. Um, and I just started getting over all of this really quickly. It's nice to look at. I think it's fun, but it was getting it was it was getting hard to keep up with my routine. And to me, the routine is more important than the way it looks. So after a couple months, I just started kind of relying on some photos, pens, some washi. I kind of got more minimalistic with it. Some days are truly just handwriting and that's all. And I started really moving away from all the ephemera and all that stuff. I also realized that um, now that I'm getting to the end of the year, I cannot do like a really good flip of my daily journal because I have all of this stuff that kind of stops the pages from flowing and I realize that I don't really like that. And so for 2025, I decided that my journal is going to be handwriting exclusively. Just me and my thoughts and my pen. On occasion, I'll have a couple of photos on occasion, I'll have some stickers, but that's really going to be the extent to my journaling in 2025. And I think I'm very excited to change it up in this way. Um, I just want the clarity of pen and paper, and I let the influence of it all kind of steer me away from my true nature of journaling. You know, and so for the new year, this is what you can expect to see in my journaling. 
couple of pictures, couple stickers, my pen, no ephemera, no postcards, no keepsakes. I just want a really clean journal. You know, and the stickers, what's nice about stickers is that they don't deter from the flipping of a page. You know, the all of these like cards that I saved and all of these things that I saved, they've really gotten in the way of feeling like I can flip through this journal. And I just want to keep it out for 2025. So that's something that the Hobonichi helped me to learn, right? Um, but I, And I am a little disappointed with myself that I let the influence get to me, but it kind of happens to all of us in this community. Um, I'd love to uh, write, drop down in the comments if you've ever experienced something where, you know, the content and the Instagrammers and the influence kind of led you a little bit astray, right? I'd love to know. Let me know in the comments. So another thing that I realized about this experience is that the dated pages were so essential to keeping me accountable. I don't, I rare, I, I have maybe like two days where I didn't journal in a row, but otherwise I tried to stay really consistent because the thought of a, too many blank pages in a row really kind of bummed me out. Um, and so one of the things that I'm definitely going to look for in a new planner for 2025 is that all of the pages are dated because I think that that was really, really crucial in keeping me accountable in this book. Um, one thing I did also learn from the Hobonichi is that I like Tomoe River paper and I really enjoy using fountain pens on this paper and it's a really enjoyable experience. And I want to continue using a journal that paper in that it's paper is going to give me like is going to be a vibe. I want paper that's a vibe and that is feels nice in hand that I can write with all my fountain pens and really enjoy. I liked the paper and enjoying that visceral feeling of ink on paper an awesome paper, not just any old paper. So I'm definitely going to continue that in my 2025 journal, focusing on paper, focusing on a dated page, but no more ephemera other than photos and a couple stickers. This is where you can really see the planning starts to change and be more focused on handwriting, which is what I want. Um, you know, uh, I was very tempted to leave the Hobonichi completely in the middle of 2024, but I, f I really wanted to be in this an entire year. So I just, I'm just sticking it out through the end of the year. Um, one thing again about the, another thing about the Hobonichi that kind of I learned throughout using it is that I don't like the hardcover. It's beautiful, but I promise you every three months I wanted to change it and put it in a cover, but I couldn't because the nature of the hone is that it has a cover and so it doesn't fit well into existing A5 covers. So I probably won't do this hardcover in the future. Again, a couple of months of the year, this was exactly what I needed and wanted, but then there were moments that I was kind of over it and I couldn't put a cover on it. So that's something that I'll probably uh, change my purchases in the future. And I'll probably go with a cousin, um, which doesn't have this hardcover so that I can interchange leather covers when I want. Because I have a couple and I felt like they just collected this this year because my primary journal, I couldn't really put a cover on. And so all of that was learned from this experience. And I'm very, very grateful for the Hobonichi to have shown me what my likes were, what my dislikes are, and really what my style is. So I'm very, very grateful to this planner. Oh, I'm sorry. There's one last thing about the Hobonichi that I learned, and it's actually another dislike. I realized that I don't like the busyness of the page. I do not want a date. Like, I don't want this timeline. I don't want these quotes. I don't want there to be a different color every month. I don't want all of this stuff that's on the page. Um, oh, and if you're wondering why July has no entries, I journaled in somewhere else for the month to experiment with some options for 2025. But I just felt like all of this was distracting. I didn't want to see it on the page anymore. 
I just wanted a blank clear page. And so that's another thing that the Hobonichi, Hobonichi Hone taught me. I want a cleaner page. That's all. I want a cleaner page. So now that I know what really worked here, what didn't work for me, I want to show you based on that experience in 2024, what I'll be using in 2025. So for 2025, I'm going to be using a freely noted grid notebook, a plain grid notebook, no graphs, no colored pages, no quotes, just open blank four millimeter grid. And sorry, I lost kind of my train of thought. I'm just using a notebook. This notebook is housed in a Hobonichi uh, Yumi Kitagishi cover from 2025 with a cover on cover. And I just have some deco here. And um, these are, this is the A5 pencil board. I have two and I use one kind of like to create a lining and then one that I slipped in a plastic cover in the notebook. And what I'm doing because I, again, I mentioned some of those things that I need in a daily journal. I am going to start from now in 2024 dating each page. Every couple of days or every week, I'm just going to sit down and write in dates for all of 2025. I've already finished the month of January. This way I can keep myself accountable because I know a dated page really works for me. And I know that I'll feel guilty and this will kind of keep me coming back knowing that I have my pages predated. Um, I am excited about just open page, handwriting only, larger grid, which also will make this page feel less overwhelming. Um, I really, really love the freely noted and this is by Planner Monkey Co., this notebook. I really love this paper. I find this paper to be more enjoyable than the Hobonichi paper. I also find this paper to be more enjoyable than Sterling Ink paper. And it's all Tomoe River, but for some reason, it's just not created equal. And I really enjoyed writing in this paper. To experiment, I think you guys remember I left the Hobonichi for the month of July. I was in here for some of that time and just experimenting with do I, do I like how my pens feel on this paper? Do I enjoy writing in it? Do I enjoy flipping the page? And the answer was yes, 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 yes. I enjoyed it even more so than the Hobonichi. So I decided that this was def, so that's why I kind of started experimenting in the back. And now in the front of the notebook where everything is super fresh, unused, is where I'm gonna start for 2025. And this is a 400 plus page notebook, so I'll have plenty of pages to do a page per day. And you know, when I get kind of tired of the cuteness of all this, although <laughs> I think that might be hard to do because it's super cute, but when I get tired of all this cuteness, I can easily swap out the covers, easily change it up to more fit my mood at the time. Um, and so this I feel is going to give me all the things that I know I want after the experiment of the Hobonichi in 2024. And, you know, so when sometimes, you know, uh, purchases don't work out or things that you invested in don't work out. Uh, but as long as you learned from the experience and you learn more about your style, your system and the things that work for you, it's a win. Don't even stress, you know, that you no longer are using the product because you learn so much from it. I thank this product for helping me understand that this is where I want to be with my daily journaling experience. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Obonichi. Nothing was lost. So one other element that I that I do like but I didn't want in my daily journal is all of the ephemera and the you know journaling of kind of life and experiences and you know the little takeaways from those moments. Instead of putting them in my daily journal, which I know I don't want, I am going to focus more so on doing that kind of journaling in my TNs. I'm, all, I'm honestly already doing it in my TNs, but I think what I'll do is I'm going to do it more so in 2025. This TN is a food journal. 
So I'm going to do more food journaling in here. I'm not gonna put any of it in my daily journal. Uh, this one is for everyday experiences and memories. I am going to do more of that in here. More of that in here for 2025 and then this one is travel and again i am going to really focus on putting all of my journal i'm sorry all of my travel journaling and the ephemera that i keep and the things that i take away from the, the trips i'm going to focus on putting them in here and really kind of bulk up these these tns that still have plenty of space for me to use and that's what i'll do that ephemera collecting of things little pieces of paper business cards all that stuff i'm going to put in here and i'm not going to put it in my daily journal and i think that makes me actually quite happy because i really like using them and i want to use them more so i'm going to stick to purely just writing in my daily journal and all of that other memory keeping that i was initially doing in my journal i'm going to do in these I'm thinking of swapping out this black for a brown just so I can have like some differentiating between each all of the three of them uh, but they're still quite loved and I really enjoy feeling touching them and using them so this idea will just help me do that more and so that is how that is kind of what I'm planning for my 2025 journal and it was a lot of just reflection on this process making mistakes, learning about my likes and my dislikes and learning about myself. And I took kind of all of that, really reflected on it. And that's how I came to the decision to move into the Freely Noted and the TNs for my journaling for 2025. I hope this video was helpful. I'd love to kind of hear what you're thinking for your 2025 journal. Um, and please, if you did have an experience like mine, where you kind of got caught up in some of the hype from the community and were maybe led astray with all the best intentions, of course, I'd love to hear about that as well. Thank you so much for watching, folks. I'm going to keep unveiling 2025 videos. So watch out for those. They're coming soon in the next couple weeks. Thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you in the next one.